Well, good 4th of July. I come out here a little while ago, and uh, I'm sort of hearing the, uh, I'm hearing the, the fireworks go off. And uh, <laughs> I guess in a way I'm the type of person that loves to watch them from a distance because I don't have to I don't have to do anything. All I have to do is just look and look across the field and be able to see the see the fireworks and to hear the fireworks. And um, I've got my door open. So if they start sounding like they're just all shooting at one time, I might get up long enough to see the colors and report back to you. Um, it's Sunday night here. It's probably about 9 o'clock, I guess, maybe, and they just started shooting them off not long ago. Um, I don't have a scripture. I'm not saying that the Lord won't give me one, but... You know, the idea that I had when I come out here was very simple. You won't get to heaven on somebody else's fireworks. It's impossible for you to get to heaven on somebody else's deeds and somebody else's works. And the reason I say that is, is because their deeds and their works is not going to even get them into heaven. So I'm hearing all them uh, fireworks. I'm hearing them off in the distance. I don't know if y'all can or not, but I'm I'm hearing them. Um. But you know, it's easy for me to sit where I am and look out the door and focus my eyes on the noise or where I hear the noise. And generally, I'm going to see some beautiful lights. But that sound and them lights is not going to help me on that day. I mean, somebody bought them fireworks. Somebody paid good money for them fireworks. And, you know, sad to say, them fireworks is going to be gone in 30 minutes or so. And I'm not going to hear any more banging because they're going to have already used them all up. I'm still hearing a few go off right now. But you know, we're none of us are going to make it on the popularity of somebody else. You know, I'm hearing them go off and I hear some that's pretty strong and I'm probably missing a little bit of lights out there right now. They seem like they are extremely far away now. But you know, there goes one. See, I probably missed that one. The truth of the matter is, I didn't have to pay for that firework that just exploded. I get to sit here and I get to be the recipient of somebody else's labor. There goes another one. That one had lights on it. See... All that fun that they're having, they're giving me a little bit of enjoyment too. But here's the here's the thing. They they're the ones who paid for that. They had the honor of taking a match and lighting the fuse and getting enough out of the way to allow them things to go off and had the fun of seeing it explode above their houses. There goes another one, a big one. But see, 
they don't realize that I'm getting joy just out of being out here tonight making this little video. There's a lot of people that have the desire to be the loud noise in the room. But you know, it's more than just loud noise in the room. It's it's sort of like I hear people sometimes shooting shotgun shells. And when I hear people shooting shotgun shells, I'm sure that they're probably shooting them up in the air. And you know, I even have been so nearby that I would hear the bullets fall down on my shed. It felt, sounded like rain, that them little pellets would fall down on my shed. They had no idea where them little bullets was going to fall. It's a little bit frightening to know that the bullets are falling down around you at such a high rate of speed. But you are not going to get to heaven on somebody else's boom. You're not going to go to heaven based on somebody else's works. I can answer questions. I enjoy answering questions. Matter of fact, I like when I'm on Facebook and I see questions that people ask and I see that nobody has already given their opinion, I will try my best to give someone the right answer for their question. And I'm not talking about just going and giving them one of them little tiny little firecrackers or one of them little silent bottle rockets. No, I want to give something that's going to make them think, that they're going to stay there long enough to make them think. I want them to come back and find the answer that will deal with their heart. And, you know, if I give the right answer, then the right answer is on them. If I give them the right answer, then they got something to meditate on. They got something to think about. And if they are satisfied with the answer once in a great while, they will even respond back with a positive word. Now, you know, that don't always happen. I certainly don't do it to get praise from man. I don't do it to just because I don't have nothing else to do. I feel like that person asked that question to receive an answer, especially when the question is a good question. When the question could be a question that deserves an answer. I had one tonight that asked the question, what was the difference in the ten virgins? And obviously, because I remember the story about the ten virgins, I was able to explain what the difference was in the ten virgins. The five virgins was wise. They had oil in their lamp. And they had salvation inside them. But then there was five that was basically lost. And they was wanting to get oil from the others that had the oil. And they was considered to be the ones that were lost. When the bridegroom came, then the bridegroom collected the ones that had the oil in their lamp, the saved, and he left behind the ones that were lost. I let the man know it was a picture of the bride. Now, you know what? He's got something to think on now. When he goes back and reads the answer that I give him, 
the question that he should ask is, am I the bride that's got the oil? Am I the bride that is saved? Or am I the bride that don't have no oil? And you know, I happen to believe that what I gave to him was a good answer. Because that answer turns into conviction. If a person wants to know the truth, they'll hear the truth. See, I'm hearing the sounds out there right now of all of them shots going off outside. I'm still the beneficiary of hearing all them sounds. I'm not looking at them. I've got my door open, but I'm not backed away from the camera to look at them. You know, I look at it like this. When you see one fireworks, you've, you've seen them all. Oh, you might find a color that you hadn't seen. But you know what? The flash of the light is there only for a second, and then it disappears. The light that you see from it only brings joy for a season, a short, short season. And when that season is over, then you wait for another one to go up. That's what they're doing right now. They seemingly are opening up again. It sounds to me like they're not done yet. Somebody made a bigger investment. Somebody ended up buying a lot of fireworks. I'll be honest with you. I, I, I realize people get joy out of fireworks. I just can't see myself taking money and taking a match and burning the money. Maybe it's just because I don't have a lot of free money to take a match and burn up the money. So I choose to let other people buy the fireworks. And I'm just the recipient of the banging and the lights and the booms and the enjoyments that they're doing that they're paying for. You know, the bigger their fireworks the easier it is for me to see them. The more money they spend for their fireworks, the bigger they are, the better it is I can see them. But I can't get to heaven on that boom that just went off. I can't get to heaven with that. I enjoy listening it's just like listening to a good gospel message. I like listening to good preaching. I could sit there all day long and listen to quality good preaching. I heard good preaching this morning. And I'm listening to fireworks going off right now. You know, sad to say... There's a lot of duds that are out there that they spent money for that maybe not every one of them lit. Maybe not every one of them went off. Maybe not every one of them turned out to be a bright, bright light. I'm sure that there's probably a few that sort of dudded out depending on the quality of what you buy. See, I'm hearing them going off out there right now. Here's some advice. Don't try to get God to be impressed with you on somebody else's bang. Somebody else's explosion, don't be impressed with someone else's explosion. Be willing to let the Lord give you your own explosion. 
And then it's sort of like, it's sort of like sitting on a motorcycle revving the engine. You feel the horsepower and the engine underneath you. But if I'm a hundred foot from that motorcycle and that person revs that engine up, I don't feel the vibration. Now the motorcyclist does, but I don't get no benefit other than the sound of that motorcycle. I don't get no benefit from it. So the truth of the matter is, if you want something from the Lord, you got to get it yourself. You got to go to the one that is able to give you the boom and the, and the, and the sound along with the fact that he's willing to give you salvation. For all who have sinned, that's where you start to get the right kind of firecrackers. You admit you're a sinner. You go to Romans chapter 5 and verse 8, that God commendeth his love. Talked about it not long ago. God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. See, he paid for the boom and the fireworks that goes off in your life. You are the recipient of the booms in your life when you let him be the one to give it to you. Then in Romans 6.23, the Bible says the wages of sin is death. See, these firecrackers tonight and these ordinances that they're shooting off is going to gradually go away as the night gets older and older. These Fireworks are going to go away because they didn't buy that many. And I'm starting to hear them sort of fade out little by little. They'll have all that they bought. Then they won't be no more. But I hear a few. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. And that's found in Jesus Christ, the Lord. Then, how you get the real boom inside of you is Romans 10 and verse 9. The Bible says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. That's how you know that you get in the effect of the, of the boom inside you. It's not just me hearing it from a distance, it's what's located inside me. It takes confession. It takes believing that Jesus died and that he rose again. And we have to believe that in order for us to be able to go to the place that is called heaven. The next verse is for whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord, shall be saved. So that means that if it's just me out here, here in the fireworks, then it's just me that is a recipient. But the Bible says, for whosoever. I could go and get 50 of my friends and get them in my yard, and they would all be a recipient of the fireworks. They would all get to hear the sounds going off and the lights going off because everyone is considered to be a whosoever. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. And then you can know that you've been born again. First John 5 and 13 says, These things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that you have eternal life, and that ye believe on the name of the Son of God. See, there's a lot of people that don't know about salvation because they're banking on the boom of other people. They're, they're, they're wanting to wait on the boom from another person. 
and you don't always get the boom in your your life at the time you think. Satan always comes and tries to crowd out what what the Lord is doing. He always will mess with what's going on in your life. So if you're thinking that you're going to get or be a recipient of somebody else's testimony and somebody else's firework, I can tell you right now, it ain't going to work. I'm the beneficiary of the sounds that I'm hearing right now. But they're getting more and more slim. They're getting more and more where they're dying out now. The question is, do you know Jesus? Do you know for a fact that you know Jesus? It's time to find out. It's time for you to know. I just wanted to come out and take advantage of all the all the shooting and the banging to let you know that you can't depend on somebody else's banging to get you into heaven. The churches are full of people that are loud, boastful, braggish. The church is full of them kind. However, the church is not full of humbleness. There, it's not full of righteousness. It's not full of the Holy Spirit. So you have to ask yourself, what are you listening to? Something to think about. Something to definitely think about. Elderly Ministry is how you can contact me. You're welcome to give me a call. Uh, if you leave a message, I'll be more than glad to get back with you. Um, this is YouTube. You can reach me on YouTube anytime. Be glad to talk with you. Uh, leave a message when you call. Leave me a phone number and I'll be glad to talk with you. Anything that I can do, I'll be glad to help. I will promise you one thing. I will not shoot off fireworks to you. I'll give you the truth and tell you the truth. Because the truth is what sets you free. Okay. I appreciate y'all listening. Thank y'all for watching.